civilizations have been building with structural wood products for millennia. A naturally abundant material in almost every landscape, wood has been vital to the growth and prosperity of populations. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the amazing science behind wood, our only truly renewable building product. Tree species can be divided into two categories, hardwoods and softwoods. There are some general giveaways that may suggest the type of tree you're looking at. For example, hardwoods are typically broadleaved trees and may feature fruits and flowers. Good examples of these include gum trees, mountain ash, and of course, any fruit trees you may have in your garden. In contrast, softwood trees typically feature needle-like leaves and may also bear cones. The most common softwood trees in Australia fall within the pine variety, with a range of species such as radiata, slash, or others grown depending on the climactic region. Whether hardwood or softwood, the wood within the tree is produced in a similar way and takes a similar form. Wood fibres are typically long and thin, similar in shape to a drinking straw, although a tiny fraction of the size. This shape supports the transfer of water and nutrients between the leaves and the roots, and is also better suited to supporting the vertical growth of the tree. Like all green plants, a tree can manufacture its own food through the process of photosynthesis, which typically takes place in the leaves. Using only water from the soil, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and light from the sun, trees can grow at rapid rates. To deliver water to the leaves, it is absorbed through the tree's root system and transported through the long, narrow columns of conjoined wood fibres. Carbon dioxide is taken in through tiny openings in the leaf surfaces, called stomata. With the help of the sun, the water and the air are combined in the presence of chlorophyll to make sugars that provide energy to the tree. Some sugars are used to make new leaves, some in making new shoots, and some in making new wood. The sugars are transported throughout the tree in the form of sap. Trees grow new wood in two main zones, at the tip of the stem, growing a taller trunk and a longer branch, and just under the bark, increasing the diameter of the section, whether trunk or branch. The area of cell division at the tip of the stem is referred to as a meristematic region and typically looks like a bud. It is the addition of new cells at this point that gives the tree its height. This means that if you were to drive a nail into the trunk of a young tree at a height of one metre, the nail would remain at this height, even as the tree grew much taller. The process by which trees grow thicker is similar to this, although it occurs in a different location. A tree trunk is made up of four main layers. The outer bark, the inner bark, the growth zone, which is also known as the cambium, and the wood. New wood is added to the trunk of the tree in the cambium, located between the inner bark and the wood. This growth process is responsible for the rings you can see through the section of a log. Each ring represents a growth cycle, with thinner rings representative of harder years with less growth, and thicker rings suggesting faster growth. As the tree grows taller and thicker, it also produces larger fibres with higher strength capacities. This gives us the strength gradient across a log, where the centre, which was produced when the tree was young, is much less structurally robust than the new wood close to the bark. So now we have a better understanding of wood, trees, and what we need to produce structural timber, but what does this look like in real life? To find out more, I visited a plantation grower in the Green Triangle, a region spread across the southwest of Victoria and southeast of South Australia. Here they grow softwood trees for planned and sustainable harvesting. With over 10 million trees planted every year from this facility alone, it's clear they know what they're doing. I met research manager Danielle Wiseman, who further explained the tree growing process. So. The start point for the production of our trees would be um, controlled pollination using two selected pine parents who have really great qualities. Um, we do a controlled pollination, so taking pollen from uh, the father and fertilising the mother, so producing the improved seed. Um, that seed is then germinated and we take some little micro cuttings off that and we grow each of those micro cuttings into a plant. Those plants are put in the nursery um, into what we call our stool beds. And so we plant those out and we try to grow them up nice and bushy 
and then we take little cuttings off those stool beds and those cuttings are what we grow into the trees that you see in our plantations. Um, so our, our objective as tree growers, we, we're trying to produce wood. We produce a lot of other products as, as a byproduct of that, but what we really want to produce is, is high quality saw logs, ideally. And to do that, um, we bring together a number of factors. So we, we, we bring together that um, genetics program. So we try and select trees that have good wood properties. We also select trees that grow well, and we select trees that don't have a lot of branches because branches can affect wood quality. Um, and so we bring that together, both in the genetic material that we choose and in the way we manage the forest to try and grow the best trees that we possibly can. With plantations operating at such a huge scale, I was keen to learn more about the science going on behind industrial wood production. Fundamentally, research into trees would be on improving our productivity. Um, it's difficult for us to expand our land base. We have a limited amount of land, so we try to make the land that we have as productive as we possibly can. Um, we do that by um, basically growing healthy forests. So the healthier our forest is, the more productive it is. So the pressing problems for us um, would be uh, avoiding fire damage to our plantations, which obviously affects productivity, um, avoiding damage from pests and diseases, um, and just um, matching our, uh, the species that we grow to the site so that ensuring that we have a good, good productive forest because it's suited to the conditions in which it's growing. While growing plantations at this intensity creates an incredible carbon sink, I asked Danielle what impact this has on the land. Um, uh, as a land use, plantation forestry is very low impact. We only disturb the soil once every 30 or so years in Pinus radiata when we come in to do some site establishment to allow us to put in our seedlings. Um, we also have very low chemical use. We do weed control about once, every, once or twice every 30 years um, in order to establish our seedlings and after that we do very little. Um, most of our pests in the plantations are controlled through keeping our plantations healthy and resilient. Um, so we very rarely do chemical pest control, um, but we do employ some biological controls for some of our pests. An example of a successful biological control can be seen in the treatment of the Cyrex wood wasp, a pest that attacks stressed trees. We primarily control it by avoiding our trees becoming stressed and we do that by thinning them when they start to compete with each other and, and getting stressed. But if they do become stressed, we do what is called trap tree plots. Um, so we, we make some trees sick in order to attract the Cyrex and then we infect those trees with a nematode. Um, and that nema the, the Cyrex wasp comes in, lays its eggs in a stressed tree and then its larvae are infected by that nematode that we've put in, and that nematode makes the wasps that hatch out sterile. Wow. Um, and that's how we control Cyrex wood wasp. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click like below, and don't forget to subscribe to be the first to hear when we release our next episode. Check out our other videos to learn more about wood, wood products, and how to design and build with wood correctly, or head on over to our website at www.woodsolutions.com.au. See you next time.